All right, man. Shoot. I mean, what's up? We, we in L.A. now. In right. L.A. You a Ram? How you feel about that? No, I feel good. I feel good about that, man. I, I, I feel like uh, I feel free. I feel like it's a fresh start. I feel like, um, you know, everything that I've heard about the Rams and the culture here, I feel mm -hmm. like I fit in well. I only been here a short amount of time, but right. uh, I feel like I fit in well. I can be myself on and off the field. I'm, I'm excited. That part got to be important to you, though. Be yourself on and off the field. That's super exciting. Right. Uh, it's exciting. It's important because, uh, I mean, everything needs to be authentic. When, it, mm -hmm. when when stuff is authentic, it just flows well, honestly, it, in life, football, whatever the case may be. So, right. uh, yeah, I like that. But, no, you know, but let's, keep it, let's keep it a buck, though. Like, everything wasn't bad in Jacksonville. You know, they draft you. You were part yeah. of a great defense, you make a run to the AFC championship. Yeah. What was what was the good times like, the teammates? What what was that yeah. like in Jacksonville? Man, uh, from, from you know, 2016, the draft, we can go all the way back from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest blessing I've probably had besides my daughters in my life is being able to fulfill my dream of playing in the NFL, getting drafted, uh, mm -hmm. the fifth overall. Right. Uh, being in Florida, which at the time, just coming from Florida State, that was important to me. Right, right down the road, right up the up the street from Florida State, um, being able to stay in Florida, all of that was important to me. It was good. It was a, a little bit of a different staff there, different front office there at the time, but mm -hmm. uh, it was a blessing. We were not the best of teams that first mm -hmm. year. The second year, we was a better team for sure. We had some more guys. We got some more pieces in there that we mm -hmm. needed to kind of complete the team. We felt like. Um, my teammates, man, I love my team. I love my former teammates there right. in Jacksonville. Uh, I had a good relationship with a bunch of them, of course. Mm -hmm. like I, a lot of people know, uh, not just on the defense, but offense as well. I had right. a good relationship with some of those guys. I had a good relationship with my coaches, honestly, too. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, at times, uh, we bumped heads, of course, but I think that's natural when you, you know, have guys who have a personality and who are uh, super passionate about the game as well and, right. and, and want to go out there and succeed and do whatever's the best way for me to go out there and succeed. Mm -hmm. But I love my coaches as well. I had no issues with them either, uh, especially this past year, Coach Coach Walton. Mm -hmm. And he's probably one of the best DB coaches, if not the best DB coach I ever had in my life. He mm -hmm. was really good. He was uh, not only a good coach, uh, coached us super hard, uh, made sure we was on our technique, but he was a good person too, man. He right. cared about us off the field, uh, cared about you know battles we may be fighting off the field. Um, mm -hmm. He was always there for us, man. It was, it was, I felt that it was important that, uh, and it meant a lot that he was always trying to understand. Right. A, a, lot, a lot of times you get in situations and, uh, you know, people in authority or people in a position, they don't even care to try to understand mm -hmm. uh, you as a person, you as a player, anything. But he was he was really, uh, really thorough in, in, in everything, trying right. to make sure he knew us individually as a player and a person. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is you want somebody to keep it real, too. Yeah, like, yeah. that's the dude you're in the room with each and every week. Yep. You mentioned your teammates. You know, you mentioned that you had good relationships with mm -hmm. coaches. So, with all that being said, you we saw the emotion, right? We've seen yeah. you on the sideline wanting to win. We see you in the game talking. But with that being said, with those relationships being what they were, how does this thing start to go sour? And kind of when did that start for you? Ah, uh, man. Uh... It started when uh, when it was a when it was a front office change in mm -hmm. Jacksonville, um, and you know some guys were, you know, put in positions of power, who uh, like I kind of just talked about didn't mm -hmm. care to understand. Uh, I guess like you could say even this generation of guys or even us as players or us as people in general. Um, and yeah, I mean the first two years of uh, me being in Jacksonville, I I get. Getting to where it all started from yeah, my first yeah, two years yeah. of me being in Jacksonville, I did um, off-season training program there. Of course, trying to mm -hmm. do everything with the team, trying to be there um, and develop as a leader and a, you know a key player for the team. Those first two years, I got hurt. I wasn't able to go through training camp, preseason, anything. I was hurt trying to recover the whole time before the season, not really being up getting my groove. Mm -hmm. um, so after after two seasons back to back of that happening, I decided to make a change. Okay. Uh, it's time for a change now, right? And so that change was to just train somewhere different instead of being there. Exactly. Train okay. some, train somewhere train somewhere else, go back uh, to my roots or, mm -hmm. you know, go to uh, somewhere where I trusted guys, a, a team around me who I trusted mm -hmm. um, 
to train me, also have my body recovered right. Mm -hmm. um, just all aspects of, of my game and yeah. just life in general, make sure I was good. So I started to do that and um, everybody know, my teammates, the coaches, they always have known that I'm a very hard worker. Mm -hmm. I, I practice hard, I practice like I play. I, I work okay. hard, um, I go out there, I try to get, I, I try to earn everything. I don't want anything given to me, mm -hmm. I try to earn everything. Uh, earn the right and the title to be the best corner in the NFL. Yeah. Um, and everybody knew that and everybody understood that from the, for the most part, but uh, in consecutive years of me not going to voluntary uh, workouts. That part's important. Yeah, that part's very important. Uh, I've always went to everything mandatory, always. Mm -hmm. uh, but not going to voluntary workouts, I was, uh, I was talked bad about mm -hmm. uh, by, by some guys in the front office to the media, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was local media, national media, it didn't matter to them. I was talked bad about. It. I was basically portrayed, um, I guess you could say, as a bum. To be mm -hmm. honest, uh, a guy, I was portrayed as a guy who didn't work hard. A guy who, oh, he was just giving everything. That's why he's not here working hard. He's probably just chilling. He's, you know, right. uh, not doing anything. He needs to be here. Blah blah blah. Whatever the case, whatever was said was mm -hmm. said, and. Um, that rubbed me the wrong way. That, rub, okay. that definitely rubbed me the wrong way because that's not who I am, first of all. Um, and then when I did get back uh, for the mandatory stuff and everything else, that was never a conversation uh, with me. I was never pulled in uh, to a meeting, never called for a meeting or anything so they could explain uh, why they would say such things or uh, their views on things, never. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was super frustrating. Uh, okay. that's, that's what I'm talking about with understanding. I got you. They didn't, they didn't. So I mean, I'm just gonna tell you on on my end of it. I played ball, right? Yep. I, I, I would get a call every off season once I was a starter, once we won Super Bowls, to say, hey, look, when you coming through? Are you going? Yeah. What week you and Troy coming through? Like that. That was part of yeah. our conversation. But me sitting in the media, knowing that it's voluntary workouts, and hearing you know yeah. Tom Coughlin say things about you, and then hearing you know, even like that the coaches were reaching out to you and, and calling you. Yeah. My thought is, all right, this is the best player on your team. Why isn't this a conversation that you're having with him? Right, exactly. So how, do, how do you deal with that when you get back? Uh, man, and, and even that aspect of it was tough because then it got to times where in the media uh, they were answering media questions and it was like, yeah, we reached out to him and he hasn't called us back. He won't answer our calls. Um, but then the whole time, uh, you know, when we get down to the bottom of the problem, they don't have my number. Mm -hmm. They call in a, a, a wrong number. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, in front of the media, it was, oh, I was portrayed as a bad guy, not answering my coach's calls or, or not returning calls. But when we got down to the, to the root of the problem, when they didn't have my number and they didn't, you know, uh, they were calling the wrong number, that was swept under the rug, though, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was okay to to make me look like a bad guy and like I wasn't answering y'all's questions. But when we got down to the root of it and it wasn't, that wasn't the true issue, it, we just gonna sweep that under the rug. Mm -hmm. That was also an issue. Um, but uh, from the jump, my coaches, uh, the, the medical staff, the strength staff, they all knew the reasons why I was not coming okay. to off-season program. That was um, me, like I said, trusting the team that I had built around me. That had nothing to do with me not trusting them. It was mm -hmm. just me trusting my team that I built around me to make sure I'm going out there and playing at an elite level like I want to play. Um, but then, yeah, when we get back, no conversations. Right. Never had a meeting uh, with the guys who were talking bad so, about me so to the media. So for you, was it more respect? Right. Oh, definitely. I, and I've said that multiple times. And, of course, you know, the media, they're going to – spin things and twist things like they want, but that's disrespectful, right? Mm -hmm. um, nobody wants to be talked about in that way, especially when that doesn't really portray who you are as a player and a person. I mean, so we're, we're looking at it. It's the Houston Texans. I understand what that matchup is like when you're playing yeah. DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. You want the challenge flag thrown. Yeah. You don't get it. Kind of take us through what happened between you and Coach Marone, because from what I'm listening to you saying is you don't have an issue. Oh no, nah, me with and Coach. Coach. Yeah, me and Coach Marone, we we've always had a we always had a straight relationship. Mm -hmm. um, even in the off season, he's came and visited and, and saw what I was doing, putting in the work and all of that. We always had a good relationship. Um, that incident was just what it was—an mm -hmm. incident on the sideline that we we honestly see in the game 
uh, I won't say often, but we see it, mm -hmm. you know, more than just that incident that I had, the Texans game. Right. We, when when a, uh, one of your top players gets into a shouting match with the coach maybe because they see things a little bit differently than their coach saw it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what that was. High emotions in the game, of course, always high emotions. I play with a lot of emotions. I play angry. I play mad with tons of emotion. And week in and week out, uh, when I was in Jacksonville, I was asked to do the toughest task on the to me, on, on yeah. the team, I felt like on the team, uh, was to go and eliminate number one receivers so everybody else can kind of play their game, mm -hmm. right? Uh, D-Hop, the best receiver, uh, you know, in the NFL. I think a lot of people would say that. Mm -hmm. And if not, they got him in the top three, top five. 100%. So yeah. uh, that was my task for the day, to go, to go eliminate D-Hop as best as I could, to go shut down D-Hop as best as I could. And I'm doing that, and they kind of got a long drive, and I'm – you know, I'm strapping up against D-Hop, following everywhere across the field. And I saw on a route uh, where I felt like he had dropped the pass. I actually saw the ball hit the ground, and I'm asking for the challenge flag. He didn't give me the challenge flag. That's fine. That we, we, there's a difference right there. We saw a difference in that. But that was more so, uh, yo, I'm one of your top players. You've asked me to do this tough task during this game. I want you to trust me. Mm -hmm. That was all that was. I if you, you would have thrown the flag and we would have lost it, I would have came to you like, hey, I appreciate you trusting me, but, but my bad. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that he didn't throw the challenge flag, it rubbed me the wrong way mm -hmm. just because I was like, man, I feel like y'all don't trust me. One, okay. all right, so things have been going on where I don't feel like y'all respect me in the right. off season, And even, you know, even during the season last year, this year, you know, y'all see me in the hallway all day or y'all see me around the facility, you won't say anything to me. But when I get you know, in my car later, I get home later and talk to my agent. Y'all call him about a so-called issue that y'all have. Mm -hmm. So it's like y'all don't even, you know, respect me enough to treat me like a man. Call me in. Let's have a conversation. I've never had a conversation with y'all. If y'all got issues, let's let's figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the respect aspect and then the trust aspect is like, man, okay, so do y'all trust me? Do y'all value me, mm -hmm. really, as a, as a top corner in this game? Y'all ask right. me to do this, you know, big task week in and week out. Right. Um, that's all that was to me. But anyway, we got into the little shouting match, and it was what it was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, end of the game, uh, emotions are high just because of not only that incident, but uh, the way the way we lost the game with the mm -hmm. two-point conversion attempt. That's a division opponent. We're starting off 0-2 now. It, it just emotions are high in the locker room. But uh, like I said, me and Doug have always had a straight relationship. So, so, so y'all, did y'all chop it up after that and, and settle it? Or to both of y'all, was it we had the situation on the sideline? It's done. Yeah, had the situation on the sideline. We were done with it. We never really, we never communicated after the rest of the game or after the game. Okay. Um, so how do we? So you know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting around watching like everybody else, yeah. and then eventually we get to okay, Jalen Ramsey. Doesn't want to play there. He's the best player on the team. This is where he's, he's in Florida. Like all of these things you mm -hmm. said. And then we get Jalen Ramsey wants to be traded. Right. How do we get from you're cool with coach and what happened mm -hmm. on the sideline to that? So um, kind of like I've said from the jump, it had nothing to do with my teammates for sure. And, mm -hmm. and not even my coaches. It had okay. to do with uh, the front office and the disrespect and the, uh, not trusting me and not valuing me. So after the game, uh, after everybody shower up everything, I get called into a meeting and, you know, in a little small little room. Um, and I'm not going to go into all the details of that meeting, but it was some uh, front office guys in that meeting, about four, four guys and then myself in that meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, some, the disrespect got, got to another level in that meeting. And mind you, Coach Marone wasn't even in the meeting. Okay. So, so it's not like me and Coach Marone had something to hash out. Okay. It wasn't even him in the meeting. So it, was, so it wasn't even, it was beyond that one situation to why you got called in? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Right. You would have to ask them. But I know once we were in that meeting and we were sitting down and uh, and they were talking. I didn't even I didn't even speak during the meeting. They were talking. Uh, the disrespect. <laughs> so wait, you had a meeting where you could, where you didn't speak? I didn't speak. But I didn't speak um, honestly. Out of I didn't want to go back and forth. Right. Uh, there's no and like an adult. Yeah. There's no reason for us to sit in here in a meeting and argue. Mm -hmm. um, it's four of y'all in here and me, and, and you know, two of y'all are sitting down who I really respect a lot, and then you know, a, another certain two are standing up, uh, like over me, and we're we gonna sit here and have a conversation. Um, that's what that's gonna be. I'm not gonna go back and forth with y'all, though, because mm -hmm. clearly there was a difference in 
what we thought was going on anyway during the game. And Coach Marone isn't in here, so it's not like, not like me and Coach Marone are having a conversation mm -hmm. about what happened. It's what y'all saw, and y'all want to lecture me or talk to me about it. So uh, that's why I didn't speak. I didn't okay. speak like they didn't let me speak. It was just like, a, I got you. let me hear everything that y'all have to say. Let me hear y'all out. Okay, next word. Okay, next mm -hmm. person. Okay, next person. Okay. Um, and I guess that rubbed him the wrong way, too. Okay. And the disrespect got to a level that it shouldn't get to as a, as a man, okay. not even as a football player. You, there's certain now, things that was you be shouldn't my next say. Question. There yeah. are sometimes you have football conversations, mm -hmm. and I think we all understand being heated and things being said in For football sure. conversations. Yeah. I've been, it, it yeah, may get everybody's to been cussed at by though. coaches and, and, and so as a man, coach hard. Felt, it was, as, it was a, a conversation as a man, like, you're not going to talk to me this way. Okay. This tone you're talking to me in, you're not going to talk to me in this tone. The things that you are saying, mm -hmm. you're not going to say that because you wouldn't say this if we was in another space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You wouldn't say this in front of. If it's just me and you. Yeah, you know. No, I know what you mean. So, uh, yeah, I walked out of that meeting. And uh, I called my agent and I said, hey, man, it's, I said, I, I don't want to play here in Jacksonville anymore. Uh, he asked me why I explained the meeting to him in, in detail, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, he, he told me, he said, uh, he told me sleep on it. Mm -hmm. He told me really think about it. Um, so that's what I did for like the next, you know, the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really thought about it, really slept on it. And all things added up, just the disrespect over the two years with the offseason stuff and the disrespect around the building with uh, it not being authentic. Like you, mm -hmm. you speaking to me in the hallways, acting like we're good, but then I get to the car and my agent says, oh, he, he said, you know, this was an issue or that was an issue. Mm -hmm. um, not trusting me, not, not feeling like you value me. You ask mm -hmm. me to do uh, a big task every game, but you don't really value me. You just like, right. uh, wh whatever. Um, so all of that added up. I was thinking about all of that, and I was trying to weigh the pros and the cons. And um, in in an organization, and when you have a culture, uh, it does come from top down. Um, no matter how we're as players and we're as coaches trying to be on one accord, and we're trying to uh, have a great culture, if the guys at the top, in in a sense, are combating that. Right. It's always going to be a little struggle. It's okay, going to so be an issue. Say, you talk about the the top. We on the outside. We hear Shy Khan wants you on the team, mm -hmm. right? You have said, okay, I don't have a problem with coach. I don't have a problem. You're the best player on the team. Your future is longer than a lot of these people that are going to be around. So there was no way that could be salvaged. What if some of those executives are gone? Can is that something you wanted for Jalen Ramsey? to continue being a Jacksonville Jaguar? Or were you just like, you know what, I can't take it here, I gotta go? No, so um, I, uh, I have tons of respect for Shia Khan and Tony Khan, both mm -hmm. of them. Um, and I did have a meeting with Shia Khan and we talked about things. Um, and just out of respect for him, I took the meeting because uh, throughout the two, three weeks, whatever it may have been, I had been having uh, phone call meetings and, and mm -hmm. conversations two times a week, three times a week, all the time, somebody would want to talk to me about stuff. And my stance was my stance. My stance did not change. Okay. And they knew uh, why, and they knew what would change it, uh, but nothing really would change it. I'm not, a, I, I wasn't going to go in there and call for anybody's job. That's, okay. that's not me. So, um, you know, people have families to feed, people have lives, and myself included. And so I just asked to remove myself from the unhealthy situation. Um, and that was my stance on it, and, mm -hmm. and we understood that stance, and we had our meeting, and I, uh, my stance still stayed the same during the meeting, and I thought we were on one accord. I'm not really sure where he, um, where he got the, you know, thought that I was going to play that week, um, just because I hadn't even practiced yet. My mm -hmm. back was still uh, bothering me a lot. I had right. went to see a specialist, mm -hmm. uh, was getting treatment and rehab around the clock at every right. opportunity. Um, but I thought we were on one accord uh, mm -hmm. for the most part in that meeting, besides, I guess, that. Right. So, so, so take me through it. You, you have the press conference and you say, look, I'm about winning. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you said it emphatically. I want to win. Mm -hmm. I want to play. You play the Thursday night game and then there's the, the sickness and then the, yep. the back. And there's, you know, people going from the outside and sure. say, oh, we see this coming. So kind of take us through how that all came about and how everything took place yeah. that, that led to you missing the last few games? Um, 
Yeah, so the, thir the Thursday night game, we'll start all the way there because that's where it started. Um, played, I played super hard that game. Um, had like, it was a very physical game for me. I had like nine tackles or something. I, th I think I led the team in tackles that game, actually. So in the fourth quarter, uh, I don't remember exactly what play it was, but in the fourth quarter, I went over there to the sideline. I was actually getting cleaned up for a cut and stuff. And I uh, talked to the trainer. I was like, no, get the head trainer. Get Scott, get the head trainer. The head trainer came over and talked to me. And I told him, I said, my back is really bothering me. Mm -hmm. um, it's like tight and it's like, it feels like it's like spasming, like mm -hmm. shocking. And uh, he asked, he was like, do you want to finish the game? And at the time, it was, I want to say, five minutes or less left. And I'm like, I want to try to finish the game. I want to try to finish the game. So I went out there and finished the game. Afterwards, I saw him and I saw the doc in the locker room, talked to him about it. Uh, we got a good plan scheduled to come get treatment, come in the next morning, um, and then come in during the weekend, and just all the treatment uh, opportunities for me to come in and make sure my back was good and get my back checked out. Um, so that's what I did at every opportunity that I was able to go get treatment and get my back checked out. I did that. Um, they tried to give me, you know, muscle relaxers. They tried to give me anti-inflammatories. Um, I was in getting treatment, heat, stem. Because you know the outside. You know what it is on the outside. Now. Oh, you for know, sure. Like I, I'm sitting, I'm sitting next to folks. It is. Oh yeah, whatever. So. Oh, for sure. You know, this so, yeah. is a, a, a question. Like, and so if, if, if they're your if they're your former teammates, right? I'm sure mm -hmm. there's people that's wondering now with your new teammates. You know, so to answer that question, I believe was big. I think another question, though, Jalen, is a lot has been said about your contract, right? Yeah. Will you, you, you're coming in, like you said, you are the best cornerback in the NFL. They just pick up the option. They don't extend you. Was that something that played into your part, into your decision that you didn't want to be there? No, not at all. Uh, the exact reasons that I named, the respect and the trust mm -hmm. and not valuing me, was the only reasons I... Uh, Right, because you're going to hear all of these things. For sure. Those were you know. the only reasons for me to question the trade. I did not want to play uh, for the guys, those couple guys so, in that front office. So now if I'm the Rams, right, so so now we move on, we, we get the trade. How does that happen? How do you find out? Because I've I never been traded. I don't know how that yeah. works. How do you find out? Where are you? What are you doing when you find out that you will be a Los uh, Angeles Rams? Man, I was, uh, I was at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was eating some tacos, having Taco Tuesday with my lady. <laughs> And, uh, beautiful baby girl, by the way. Yeah, I did just have a, a, a beautiful baby girl not too long ago. Uh, but me and my girl, we were at home watching uh, watching TV, eating some tacos, and uh, I got a call, um, and it was the call that let me know where I was going, uh, and that I was going to be traded, and I was happy. I was like I said at the beginning, I felt free. I felt uh, I felt a, like a fresh new start was about to begin. Uh, I was just overjoyed, man. I had so much excitement in my heart. Um, I was just thanking God, and uh, it's been, it had been a journey. Mm -hmm. It's been a tough journey, um, but I think God makes no mistakes. So, you got a king's ransom for a corner, for for, for a guy who plays on the outskirts of yeah. the defense. Obviously, the most important job on the defense. But when when people start giving up first rounders for you, that's a yeah. you know that's a, that's a lot of responsibility. They it's value a, me. Yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of value placed on that. But in that value, is it like all right, look, you gave these things up for me. Let's get this contract done, or are you like, hey, we're gonna play this thing out and, and figure out where we go from here? Uh, it, the, I would say this. I haven't had any talks with them at all, and mm -hmm. I would say the same thing that I was saying back when I was in Jacksonville. It's not about the money for right. me. It's not about the contract. Uh, you know, I have full a bit. I have full, you know, trust in my abilities, full mm -hmm. confidence in my abilities, um, and going out there trying to show that I'm the best corner year after year after year after year. So that's gonna come when it comes. That, right. That's that's in God's timing. So I won't even ask for. It. We haven't had a conversation about it. That's I'm not worried about it. Right. Uh, to be honest with you. Any 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 regrets about how things were handled in Jayville? Any. Are you comfortable saying, you know what, I'm a Los Angeles Ram now, yeah. and I did what I had to do? Oh, for sure. Uh, I handled things as, as best as I could in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, and when I felt the time was up there, I requested a trade. I tried not to be a distraction for my teammates. I still supported them. Um, I did what I could do to, at my time, get my back healthy and mm -hmm. uh, be there as much as I could and go through everything with the team and still be a, a part of that team. Mm -hmm. uh, but now all of that's behind me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an LA Ram. I'm, 
I'm happy to be here. All right. So, so when we put the, when we strap the the pads on, yep. right, and, and you get an opportunity uh, in your new colors, what what can we expect from Jalen Ramsey? Man, going out there proving I'm the best corner in the league. That's that's it. Uh, bringing a lot of passion, bringing a lot of fight, uh, mm -hmm. intensity. Uh, smartness to the game, to this team, help, trying to help this team get as many wins as we can get. Um, man, it's, just, it's such a blessing, honestly. Right. I get to play with the best football player in the NFL, I was Aaron, ask Aaron, question. Aaron Donald. Yeah. Like I, me, personally, I'm biased because I'm a defensive guy, but he is the best player in the NFL, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, and I believe I'm the best corner in the NFL. So you, you, you know, combine two guys like that, and then you got Eric Weddle, mm -hmm. uh, who is super smart, gonna help me out, gonna elevate my game, and hopefully I can help him and elevate his game as well. And then I get to reunite with Dante, um, who yeah, I know see, gonna hey, rush the saw, passer. We saw the, the tweet, Lynn is hurt, by the way. Lynn oh, Fortnite. he hurt, that's my guy. <laughs> he hurt though, but it's all good. It's, he know it's all love, that's still my guy forever. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.